Now, if you work in the oil and gas industry, you've probably heard about rod or tubing failures downhole, even corrosion in facilities or in pipelines. Maybe you've even heard about entire reservoirs being contaminated, basically destroyed for our value, just by a bad completions job, getting the chemistry wrong. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about microbes and their role in the oil and gas industry. I'm Derek Craig, and this is another oilfieldbasics.com video blog. Now you might be wondering what microbes are, and really they're just microscopic single cellular organisms. And these things can include bacteria, archaea, maybe some words that you're familiar with. They're accountable for roughly 50% of the biomass on Earth itself. And scientists estimate there's somewhere around five no million of these on Earth, microbes that is. Now to tackle this topic, we partnered with a company called OSP Microcheck with headquarters in Calgary and Houston. They've got over 30 years of experience and they can indeed help answer many of our questions. OSP is the go-to microbial expert specializing in microbial identification, surveillance, and even mitigation specifically in the oil and gas industry. Now these microbes can actually live under extreme conditions such as even in our formations, thousands of feet below us, hundreds of degrees Fahrenheit, they can survive that. You can find these things at the deepest depths of the ocean, um, hot environments, cold environments. A cloud has its own microbiome of bacteria. So there really isn't a, a habitat or a piece of the environment that is completely sterile or, or free of any sort of microbial life. They can be found everywhere. They're on your phone, they're on your toilet, they're on your every surface basically, especially, especially they're in water, anywhere with water. And so specifically in the oil and gas industry, they can be found in our completions fluid, in our finished uh, fuels, uh, the reservoir, and of course, drilling fluids, basically everything in our industry. And of course, microbes are capable of doing many, many things, including raising havoc in our industry. When it says left untreated, it can lead to severe corrosion, souring, product degradation. Really, that's what we're getting at, is that if problematic species of microbes happen to be the ones that uh, are introduced to that environment or become well adapted to that environment through our activities and our interventions, then we can create a lot of issues for ourselves. Now, there are two huge areas that we see issues with microbes in the oil and gas industry. First off being production, think about it. We're bringing up water that's in the reservoir with oil and gas, right? We're bringing that to surface and it's basically ancient seas, been around there for quite some time. And those microbes down there actually have still survived. So imagine how excited they are when you bring them to surface, right? They just can corrode all kinds of things depending on the particular chemistry and what type of microbes you have there. And then second, on the completion side. So again, imagine you're taking water, whether it's uh, surface water that has been prepped for injection, or whether it's reused water out of another well's production. You're taking that and you're injecting it back downhole into a reservoir that again has its own microbiology. So imagine the interactions that you can get and the pretty interesting things that can happen. All right, so here's a little key to microbial talk. Microbial load is basically how many microbes there are, while microbial community is basically who's there. So think about it in the house, if you're throwing a house party, how many people's in the house? What kind of crowd do you have in that house? And then the third one is conditions for growth. So, you know, how much of a party is it? Is this going to be an issue for us? So imagine you're an oil and gas producer and you might have something like downhole corrosion that needs to be fixed. You might come to OSP, ask them for help, but first they're probably gonna to need to run some tests to figure out what you're dealing with and how to prevent it or solve the issue. I'd argue there's about four different testing technologies that we see readily used in oil and gas. And it's not to say that any one testing technology is better than the other, or there is certainly no silver bullet testing technology that you can just go to and use all the time. But uh, understanding the types of information that you are getting from your different testing technologies, uh, the limitations and, and what's actually being measured is what's important for selecting the right testing technology for the question being asked. So I like to think about this as a list, um, an increasing amount of information provided. So at the bottom of this list is the culture media bottles or the bug bottles. Um, you know, the SRB and APB bug bottles are the classic examples of this. They were invented, I think, from 1953 by a guy named John Post Postgate. Moving up that information yield scale, we get to ATP testing technology. So ATP is a biomolecule found in every living cell, and you can think of it as the energy currency of life. So all of our cells, yours, mine, bacterial, doesn't matter, use ATP to complete their metabolism and, and do their things. 
So in this testing technology, we collect the cells, crack them open, remove the ATP, and then we have a detection system that allows us to measure the amount of ATP. More ATP means there's more active and living microbes in that sample. So that gives us a relatively rapid, as in it can be done in around five minutes compared to 30 days for, for a bug bottle. Um, so a rapid way to measure the microbial activity as it is right now at this point in time. If we apply a biocide and start to have some killing happen, we can see or witness that killing action using an ATP testing technology. Uh, what ATP doesn't give you is any information about who is there, right? It's just living microbes, nothing about anything that uh, is dead, dormant, nothing about their names or their function, what they might be doing, are they good guys or bad guys? So to get that level of information, we often go to one of two DNA level testing technologies. So the first one is qPCR, uh, which is another acronym that stands for quantitative polymerase chain reaction. And in this one, I want you to think of it as kind of like the next generation or genomics version of a bug bottle. So we break down and target for functional groups of organisms in the same way that we did with bug bottles. So we've got targets in qPCR for sulfate reducing bacteria. We have targets for acid producing bacteria, methanogens, iron related bacteria, you name it. Um, and we're going to use genomics to count the number of instances of organisms in our sample that fit those buckets. Beauty with this one is that we don't have to actually grow them, we're just acculturing. So the sky is really the limit for the types and functions and the categories of microbes that we can count from. The very last testing technology is 16S sequencing, also known as next generation sequencing. And this is that big one where we literally put a name and a percent composition to every single microbe that is in the sample. So I can tell you that 3% of it is desulfovibrio something or other, and that's an SRB, and 3% of those isn't that threatening. But by the way, you've also got 70% holanerobium, which is an acid producer that also produces sulfide. And yeah, you know, you should be concerned about that. 70% of your community is composed of this. So hopefully you can start to see how we layer information by picking and choosing which test that we pull from. Um, it's never to say that any one test is wrong. It's just understanding what it's giving you and how you can leverage that. All right, so in summary, microbes are everywhere and we're essentially all stewards of the microbial well-being of our reservoirs. Also, multiple testing technologies exist and can be greatly valuable to figuring out what you got going on, how to treat it, and basically coming up with the whole plan of attack. So put it all together in somewhat of an equation, your identification and your evaluation methods plus your microbial control methods is gonna be what equals your reduction of your negative effects. A big thanks to OSB for partnering on this video. Indeed, we got a lot more to talk about, specifically talking about treatment options. That's gonna be coming out in another video. So be sure to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop it down in the comments below or reach out to either us or OSP. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks again for being a subscriber and we'll catch you in the next video.